Our team has a confession. In four months, you may already be out of the game. You see, we expected to be on the stage talking to you all about the metaverse and how it's expected to be the future of the retail industry. But we never could have imagined the metaverse going from an overarching idea to a tangible operation in the same amount of time that it's taken for us to do our research. So what's happened in the last four months? Disney has appointed a senior vice president in charge of consumer experiences whose team's sole responsibility will be to determine their metaverse strategy. Walmart has filed for 10 patents, several of which have to do with the operation of stores inside the metaverse. Monster Energy Drink, a CPG leader in the beverage industry, has done the same, filing several patents with intention on operating business units inside the metaverse. Microsoft is planning on acquiring gaming company Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion dollars with intention on leveraging its gaming platforms as entry into the metaverse. And lastly, Facebook. The world's leading social media company has officially changed its name to Meta, committing $10 billion alone this year to continued metaverse research and development. It's with the hearing all of that that we ask all of you, where are you in the metaverse? You see, these companies have chosen as part of their strategic competitive advantage to be early adopters of what is expected to be one of the largest emerging markets in the history of the retail industry at nearly $1 trillion by 2030. These companies have also realized one fundamentally important thing that we must meet our customers and our associates where they are wanting to be met and studies are telling us that they are increasingly want to be met in the metaverse. 80 million Americans participated in the metaverse in some capacity last month alone with that number expected to grow continuously over the next five years. Ladies and gentlemen, our customers and our associates are telling us where they are going to be, and it's our responsibility to buck the norm of being considered a technology laggard and embrace the metaverse evolution. Good afternoon, my name is Michael Tacone of Ralph's Grocery Company, and please allow me to introduce to you Team Metamergent. Zach Langer from Festival Foods, Stephanie Corrales of Niagara Bottling Company, Arya Bhatia of TJ UK Trade Networks and Plant Power, Rosita Shotkovska of Albertsons Companies, and Victor Di Mayugo from UNFI. Collectively, Team Metamergent is the youngest capstone team since the 1980s, and that's important <laughs> because it's going to be our generation that helps usher in your future consumer. We're going to ask you to go back to your companies today and invest in the required resources that it's going to take to develop your company's metaverse strategy to help you capitalize on the 39.4 expected market growth over the next seven years, because if you don't, someone else will. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the metaverse is an emerging market that is here to stay, and everyone in this room has a stake. CPG, retailer, and wholesaler alike, it's time that we embrace the metaverse as the omni-channel our customers and our associates seek. Today we'll be discussing the metaverse's future consumer how the evolution of technology has truly paved the way for the metaverse. And finally, how we as an industry can truly capitalize on this emerging market. But before we get too deep into this presentation, let's just understand what the metaverse is. The metaverse is simply a virtual space that blends the physical and digital worlds together, allowing people to meet and connect. And now we're gonna show you a video that will help you visualize this virtual world. And as you watch this video, just remember, some of the technology you see in it is already here, while others are being developed as we speak. Connection is a spark that gives our lives meaning. It drives us to seek out others who feel the same way. Why don't you input the data and we'll take a look together. Hey, Mari, what you got for me? To find those who share our views, yet offer different people. perspectives. Saw this net. Look over here. Challenge us with new ways of seeing. But I think we should... Deepen our understanding. And enrich our lives. 最后一笔的时候, Great things happen 
when we commit to something bigger than ourselves. Let's take a closer look at it. Place this here. Let's see how we go from there, okay? This sense of collaboration and the feelings of connection it brings excites us. Hey, just in time. I'm going to move it slightly, okay? It's yours, take it. We have two planes right now on the same trajectory. As we put people first, technology fades into the background and feels like anything but. Aisha, what do you think? I think if we head 330, maintaining 2800, we'll be clear for approach. Excellent. This changes the way we see the world and in turn, changes the world we see. These numbers are looking great, actually. There's promise in the possibilities. And what we see and create next will stretch the imagination. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Slowly coming towards the thumb. A world without boundaries. Good job. A lot better than yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Slowly bring the A world down. where technology enhances, not limits, humanity. With people front, center, and in the spotlight. The future is here. And here can be anywhere. Introducing Microsoft Mesh. Wow, what an exciting video. Here can be anywhere, the metaverse. As we see, the metaverse is a place that the future consumer is going to be spending a lot of their time. They're going to use it to interact with their friends, conduct work meetings, and even receive medical help. But what does this look like for our industry? Well, visualize a customer wa walking one of your virtual stores, and just with one click of a button, they're able to get help from your virtual associate. But who is the consumer that truly craves this experience? Well, this consumer is Generation Alpha. And Generation Alpha is the generation that was born from 2010 all the way to 2025. And now let me take a second to introduce you to someone from this generation. This, this is Andy. And Andy was born in 2011. And it's extremely important that we as an audience understand Andy's traits and behaviors because Andy right here is our future consumer and our future associate. By 2030, adult Andy will enter the workforce and become a part of the largest generation in the history of humanity. Get this, the largest generation in the history of humanity at more than two billion people. And, and, and while Andy craves this experience, it's extremely important for us to understand what makes Andy different. Because unlike previous generations who were influenced by social and historical events, Andy right here is influenced by the evolution of technology and her exposure to it. Get this, the iPad? The iPad came a year before Andy was born, and her parents used it as an educational and an entertainment tool for Andy. And what that has done today is that it's made Andy extremely tech savvy and open to using, understanding, and adopting technology. In our research, we found a study conducted by a global research company, Global Data, that shows our future consumer will want to be met in the metaverse. With this emerging market, it is critical that we meet them where they want to be met. 72% will want to use it as an experience, like going to a virtual concert. 56% will want to use it as a sales channel to buy and sell physical goods through one of your virtual stores. And 67% will want to use it as a sales and marketing, like having a billboard in a virtual concert. Generation Alpha and Andy, we are going to want a hybrid working style. And the metaverse is here to help all of you with that. Like we saw in the video earlier today, it shows that the people at a work meeting, both physically and virtually, the people there virtually were there from anywhere in the world. This generation was born in the convenience era where they've had Uber their entire lives and they've been able to order things online through Amazon. And they've been able to go to concerts virtually. For example, Travis Scott, a well-known rapper, had a concert in Fortnite, which is in the metaverse. 
12.3 million people watched this concert live. Travis Scott got 1.4 million new Instagram followers because of this. He also got $20 million in additional revenue because of this concert. And he wore Nikes on his virtual avatar, which brought an estimated worth of a half a million dollars of return on investment for Nike. Let's zoom out for a moment. There is an emerging market, which is the metaverse a large market driven by technological evolution. Let me take you back 30 years ago when the internet came about. Do you remember Yahoo, Netscape, Google? These are browsers that use static content to provide and retrieve information from their users. This is also Web1, which introduced the idea of e-commerce. A few years later, technology evolved to Web2 introducing the idea of interactive applications. For example, your Albertsons app, your Starbucks app, your DoorDash app. This application led to the rise of paid subscription and continued evolution of e-commerce. Now, as we stand here in front of you, technology is again evolving from Web 2 to Web 3, which is the metaverse. The metaverse is connecting its users through the internet using virtual worlds. Virtual worlds such as Meta, Roblox, Decentraland, Sandbox, are allowing retailers such as Microsoft, Walmart, to create virtual retail space so they can meet Andy, their future customers, and their future associates where they want to be met. So what is the metaverse? According to Peter Warman, CEO of NuZoo, a tech-leading company who serves companies like Pepsi, PwC, and Nike. It is a destination where people can enjoy being a fan, a player, or a creator, often simultaneously maximizing engagement and therefore business potential. Metaverse is a technological evolution that has a large business potential. Put it in simple words, it is a virtual space which blends the physical and digital worlds allowing people to meet and connect. It is a virtual space that can help your companies create commerce and additional revenue stream. We discussed where Andy wants to be met. We've explained how technology has allowed this to happen. And now we will show you the possibilities that can help add an additional stream of revenue to your business while also serving Andy. It is, it is clear to us that if, if companies want to continue to thrive in the years to come, they must have a virtual presence. This can be achieved through a virtual store or advertising and marketing. Meta Commerce is conducted through virtual stores where companies can sell their products Using this new type of technology, companies can blend the physical aspect of shopping in the metaverse. This virtual landscape will allow Andy and other consumers to meet and have that in-store experience from the comfort of their homes. Now, let me show you what that virtual store will look like. As you can see, it is possible to replicate your own stores and brands in the, in the metaverse. These companies have already invested in the metaverse. So now let's take a look at how these companies can extract value from being in this virtual landscape. Wendy's, for example, created Wendyverse, a virtual restaurant that allows its consumers to engage with its brands by giving them coupons that they can later redeem in a physical restaurant. Now, how do you advertise? Let me show you. Imagine if this billboard was front and center at the Travis Scott concert with the 12.3 million 
concert goers with your brands right on it. This type of placement will create opportunities for your brands and consumers to engage impulsively. In addition, companies are creating digital marketing campaigns. Take Coca-Cola, for example. They've launched an exclusive flavor with Fortnite on their platform before the product even hits our physical stores later in May. So now you're probably asking yourself, how is it that I can have that virtual presence? Here are some steps that can help you begin your journey. First, you must decide if you want to buy or rent a, vir a virtual space on a platform. Second, you must develop your presence or a strategic plan. Third, connect with a web developer that can bring these ideas to life. And finally, connect your systems for distribution. This is exactly how you will capitalize on that emerging market. And now the only question remaining from us to you is, how will you meet Andy in the metaverse? These are all great moves from an advertising, these are all great moves from an advertising, commerce, and marketing perspective that will help these companies forge better and deeper connections with their consumer. And you might be thinking, well, what's the investment? The investment varies depending on what you choose to do and what scale you choose to do it on. If you choose to rent a digital billboard, just like right now you would at a major sports event, pricing starts at $1,100 a month. If you choose to do a marketing campaign, just like right now you would to promote free grocery delivery, pricing is customized and it depends on your size and length and other factors of your campaign. And if you choose to have a virtual grocery store with virtual products and physical world delivery, pricing starts at $800,000 and from there it can be as intricate as you want it to be. You see, Metaverse is the future and our industry needs to join this omni-channel so we don't miss out on serving this emerging market. Throughout our presentation today, you have learned that undoubtedly more and more people will be spending time in a digital world, which means that every one of us in this room, the CPG and wholesale and retailers in this room who want an, added, who want an additional revenue stream with scaling like we've never seen before, this is an easy investment to make. So here are options to begin on your metaverse next steps. Option number one is to appoint a metaverse point person to execute on the commerce or marketing strategy, just like you've heard Disney already do in the beginning of our presentation. Option number two is to outsource your metaverse next steps. Think of this as hiring a consulting company. And option number three is start talking to your younger generations Ask questions, take risks, be curious, and most importantly, be courageous. The key here is to take some type of action because companies are joining the metaverse as we speak right now, which means that most of us sitting in this room were already falling behind and we simply cannot afford to do that. This is the future of how we go to business. It is additive, it's not a replacement. It is a new and different way of meeting your future consumer and future associate. And there has been a lot of connecting the dots for you here today to show you this is a new way of doing commerce. And we can either wait and watch others do it like they already are, or we can get in front of this now. And we don't have to be the trailblazers. Those are the Disney's, the Facebook's, the Walmart's of the world. We, we just need to be part of the leading pack. So we don't miss out on additional sales, additional market share, and customer loyalty that this emerging market brings us. And the question is, will you be on the sidelines watching history pass you by, or will you be part of this history-making moment? And ladies and gentlemen, the choice is yours. We thank you for your valuable time today, and we will see you in the metaverse. Thank you. <laughs> We are open for questions. Great job, you guys. Uh, I had a quick question for you. You mentioned throughout your presentation that your target audience is uh, Generation Alpha. Is there a market that you guys were looking at currently 
you know, the 10-year-olds aren't quite ready to start using their own credit cards yet. So uh, do we have a market that we're uh, looking for now? Yeah, thank you for that. So um, yes, we do. Uh, as Mike said, 80 million people logged into the metaverse just this one month in the US. And these are primarily millennials and Generation Z, um, which are currently purchasing and creating the commerce um, and hold the opportunity as of now. But in the future, Generation Alpha, uh, or our research has shown us that in the future, Generation Alpha within the next seven years will become the primary consumer and hold the largest opportunity in that industry.